There's no better way to snack than eating your way through a charcuterie board. Don't you just light up when you arrive at someone's house and you see like a grazing board or a grazing table? Rachel Daniels, owner of Dished by Rachel, gets to see people happy all the time as she builds these beautiful charcuterie boards, big and small, and she's here today to teach us how to make a beautiful board. So what are we making today? Today we are making a spring themed charcuterie board. Oh, I like it. All right, yeah. so what's the difference between, let's say, a fall charcuterie board and a spring one other than maybe some flowers? Yeah, so for the seasons, I like to use different produce that's in season. So I would use maybe apples or pears that are more in season in the fall. Okay. In the springtime, I like to use a lot of citrus because it's in season oh, yeah. and then more brighter colors in you know the spring. It's, it's interesting, I've never thought to put citrus on a charcuterie board, and I don't know why. Pairs really nicely with goat cheese. D who knew? See, yeah. Rachel knew. That's why <laughs> she's here today. All right, so let's get started. What are we making first? So today we're gonna make a board. We can start with our cheese. You okay. can grab this sliced cheese here. This is called manchego. Oh, I love manchego. Oh, and okay. this is a sheep's milk cheese, Ooh. and what we're gonna do is just kind of Fan our pieces back and forth with the points facing up. Oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. So this is our firm cheese okay. that we have today. And then this one is a triple cream. So you can just take that whole wedge and stick it there on the corner. Okay, right here. Yeah. And then this beautiful purple rind cheese is a blueberry goat cheese. I love a goat cheese. Yes. I love a goat too. I love goats <laughs> and I love cheese. And I love goat cheese. And I love using this one this time of year because it's so colorful. Yes, and we're this gonna, is fun. We're gonna tie in this beautiful purple color with some flowers that we'll decorate. Oh, with that's what the purple the pansies are for. Oh, yes. Okay. So we've got our cheese set. Now we're going to make a salami rose with oh. our charcuterie. So when I heard you were gonna teach me how to make a salami rose, I got real excited today. <laughs> how does one do this? I mean, I've tried on a wine glass. It doesn't quite yeah. work out. I don't love the look of the wine glass, but that is another way to do it. So you've got a stack of salami here. You can just take that. Okay. You have a little cup. I got my cup. So take five pieces. Okay. And what you're gonna do is just line the rim of your cup. It's gonna be blueberry in my salami rose, but that's okay. <laughs> Line the rim. Yeah, so okay. you want to just cover the rim and sort of press down right. so that you have a little opening there. Oh, I see what you've done there. Yeah. Where do you get these cute little bowls? Um, I get mine on Amazon. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, and so how many? Okay. You got your five pieces, and then you'll take your other five, and you can just lay them out in a line, right. overlapping slightly. Oh, here, I'm going to go over here. All right, all right, I've got you. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, five. All right. Yeah. And then take the whole chunk oh, and, and fold it up in fold half. Fold it in half. Hot okay. dog style. Hot dog style. And press it down so it kind of stays down. It's a good thing about salami is it's got like a little bit of a staying power. It's a little sticky. Yeah. Okay. Then we're going to roll it up tight. Oh, look at this. All right. And we're making the center of our salami rose. And then you can just set it right there in the cup. All right, I don't know if mine's gonna be as pretty as yours, but this is... Beautiful. Okay, that is so <laughs> much easier than trying to fight with a wine glass yes. and get it to stay. Yeah. Look how cute I made it, y'all. <laughs> Yay. So you can do this with pretty much any small little bowl that you have at home. Any kind of tidbit bowl? Yeah, or like a ramekin or a sauce bowl. Or okay, I just learned got. that term tidbit bowl the other day and I've been waiting to use it. <laughs> All right, so then you put this here. Yep, so then we've got a little cup of olives we can put on. Okay. And then a little jar of honey. Oh, I have a very important charcuterie question. Yes. So when I'm assembling the board, I want it to look beautiful and full, uh -huh. but I also want to leave space for people to cut the cheese. Yeah. But I noticed you just put it right there, so. Well, I will say for the most part, with maybe the slight exception of like a really soft cheese like this, mm -hmm. I like to cut pretty much all cheeses on oh, the good. board so that you don't have to worry about going in with the knife. That's a really good point. Um, especially if you're serving a board to like a party. Yeah. It's kind of awkward sometimes when you go in with a knife when there's a big block of cheese and you're yeah. thinking now, like, oh. You know what? I actually look at that as entertainment. I'm always like, <laughs> let's see, Joe get after that manchego chunk. How big of a piece can I cut off? Yeah. Um, anyway, I like to just slice, pre-slice things if pre I can. Just it makes it easier for people to serve. Okay. So right. at this point, we have our meats and cheeses. We can go in with fruit. So I would take like a big chunk of grapes. The grapes are like the biggest piece, so I like to go in next with the grapes so okay. that you make sure you have room Grape, for them. This is a trick I learned long ago, and it's such a nice, easy, you know, 
but sometimes you get a grape thing and there's like not one pretty bit of grape, so you can just oh take a little piece and put it right and put in, it fill it in and make it look beautiful. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, because I'm always trying to rearrange my grapes, but yeah, I'm learning a lot from you today. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Of course. And All right. I'll take my citrus. Okay. You little... can leave it in a half like this if you want, or you can use some slices. So you can do both. Yeah. And what a great, you know, you always have these extra little cuties left over. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I like the look of them when they're just cut in half like this. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's part of a charcuterie board is to make it edible, but the other part is for an artistic flair to make it look cool. So, yeah. um, I'll go in with some strawberries. Let's put them here and there. Yeah, what I like to do with colors that are similar is I like to have them opposite of each other. So like my oranges are opposite, my grapes are opposite. And then our strawberries are up over here. Yeah. Okay. It gives sort of like a visual symmetry when you have similar colors are opposite of each other. So when you're throwing a charcuterie board together, mm -hmm. be mindful. Don't just kind of throw a bunch of stuff together. Think about color, think about design. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, obviously you want it to be edible, but the visual aspect is what is so intriguing to people mm -hmm. these days. So um, I'll go in some with some raspberries. I'll just kind of toss them about. I like to fill in. Speaking of any, visual, like, by the way, spots. Um, there is a picture of this grazing board that you made. I mean, that's amazing. Thank you. I mean, that's completely jaw dropping. So that's what I call a grazing table. And so that was for actually a graduation party for about 70 people last June. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so I'll just take a countertop, sort of like this, throw mm -hmm. some butcher paper down, and essentially create a board, mm -hmm. you know, on steroids. Just a bigger version. Why do people love charcuterie the way that they do, by the way? I think they like it because there's so many options for like flavor combinations. You can go in with some by the way, I love that you just, here just to decorate some sprigs here and there. Yeah. The flavor combinations and I think people just are really into like snacking. So it just feels like you can have a lot of different flavors. It's fun to pair different things together. You know, and my it just looks fun. It does look fun. My kids love a Lunchable. I don't know, I could put yes. crackers and cheese in their Lunchbox, but because it's a Lunchable and it's all put together nicely, they look. So this is basically just a Lunchable for an adult, and I like yes. that. I'm here for that. Yes. Um, so to make this more spring themed, I like to garnish with herbs, and then also I'm gonna go in with, these are edible pansy flowers. Mm -hmm. So edible gonna, pansy flowers. Yeah. Okay. So if you just really want to just add an extra pizzazz. Where do you get an edible pansy? Um, you can, I buy these at Whole Foods. Okay. Or. This is so pretty. Sometimes if I need a bunch, I just order them like wholesale from a edible flower okay. supplier. <laughs> these are the type of things you teach your people when they come to workshops. Tell me yes. about your workshops. Yeah, so I host workshops about once a month where I go through steps just like this on how to create and assemble a board. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about how to slice this manchego, for example, what tools to use, how to slice this goat cheese. I was gonna ask you that too about the tools, so. Yeah, well. so um, we'll use special cheese cutters and wire cutters and we really go more in depth than we would today on how to cut different cheeses, how to arrange salami, how to fold different meats, and the color composition of how mm -hmm. to create a board, and we'll talk about flavor pairings and different fruits, how to slice fruits, things like that, all and how to put it all together. We didn't get to today, but you know <laughs> what? Rachel's next charcuterie workshop is on June 15th at the Barnard Griffin Winery in Woodenville, which I think means cheese, meats, and wine. Yes, which, absolutely. I mean, why would you not go? <laughs> We're gonna have all the details on our website. Thank you so much. Thank you.